It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Welcome to another live session of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment breakdowns and commentary. You know we're going to do a lot of breakdowns and commentary today. I don't go live very often, but uh, it's not often that we get this reignited beef with Kendrick Lamar and Drake, we've got a new contender on the floor with J. Cole. It seems like we've got a three-way battle, or at least we have Kendrick going at Drake and J. Cole on their side. So it's kind of like a 2v1 situation, which is going to get crazy. Now, the whole entire industry is buzzing right now. Twitter is buzzing. Everybody is breaking down this new diss from Kendrick Lamar. Now, as we know, last night, Metro Boomin' and Future just dropped their new album, We Don't Trust You. That's a whole conversation within itself. The album title, the storyline behind uh, Metro Boomin' and Drake falling out. Apparently, he wanted to get on a record of Metro Boomin's on the Heroes and Villains album. Metro Boomin' said, hey, bro, we good. Even though Drake sent them a verse, he still deleted that bitch and said, we don't need it. Right? Don't know where the tension originated there, but... It seems like that's where it started. So then we also have Metro Boomin coming out and he felt some type of way about um, her loss, which is the 21 Savage Drake album winning album of the year over his album, Heroes and Villains. So he put some smoke out there on Twitter. He ended up deleting the smoke uh, shortly thereafter. And Drake basically addressed him directly and said, for all the under underachievers, tweeters and deleters out there, it's up. Right. So that's what led into all of the conversation with that. Not to mention there's people out there that believe that there is a mutual female between Drake and Future that they shared. And when I say shared, it's like this lady was sleeping with both of these niggas and some pillow talking was happening. Apparently some shit got back to Drake. I mean, excuse me, got back to Future. And he said, you know what? I don't trust this nigga either. Right. So with that being said. You now have this whole battle royale going on, right? It's the whole Metro Boomin' and Future thing against Drake. And then you also have Kendrick reigniting the beef that's been here for the last 10 years, which we're going to delve into today. Um, basically joining in the project and saying, yo, oh, y'all got smoke with this nigga? Let me put my bid in too, because I want this nigga to know I'm going dead at him. But in the meantime, let me let y'all know, J. Cole, you not safe either, my brother. You over there standing with that nigga. Y'all doing tours. Y'all prancing around and shit. Y'all niggas in the studio hanging out, being acting like goddamn uh, long lost brothers and shit. I'm at y'all neck too. All right? So it's going crazy. It's going viral. We're going to get into some of the history. You know, as you can see in the thumbnail here, we got Kendrick Lamar saying, Fuck the big three, which is one of the lyrics in the diss record, in the verse. So, <laughs> man, hip hop is about to get real interesting in 2024, man. Going into the next few months, this summer, I think this shit is about to get live. And for people out here that been waiting on the fellas to step in, put their bid in and put some quality music out, I think this is going to be the battery in niggas backs. As I've always stated over the past few months, the women have been running hip hop. They've been keeping us entertained. They've been putting the records out. They've been putting numbers on the board. They've been beefing with each other, doing the whole nine. But I know there's a lot of men out there that is like, man, when is the smoke coming? When is the quality music coming from the fellas? When are we going to be able to get behind somebody that actually wants to put out quality music? I think that time is coming. Now, Tatiana, I see you in the chat. All my insiders, I need to see y'all in the chat. Um... Y'all got to check in. Where y'all at? Where, where y'all at? Y'all see that poll over there too. You know what I mean? Who y'all got taking this battle? Do y'all think Kendrick Lamar is going to reign supreme? Do y'all see Drake uh, being able to hold his own and reign supreme? Or do you think that J. Cole is going to take the cake and say, you know what? I want y'all to put some more respect on my name. Right? I don't, I don't know if it was all at the same time, but clearly... It was enough for Future to no longer trust him. You know what I mean? So it's getting real out here. Now let's go into what Kendrick Lamar said on the record last night. 
Kendrick says, these niggas talking out of their necks. Don't pull no coughing out of your mouth. I'm way too paranoid for a threat. You know what I'm saying? So this goes back to this whole first person shooter thing with Drake and J. Cole on for all the dogs. You know what I'm saying? He's letting it be known. Oh, all right, bet. Y'all, <laughs> y'all talking crazy. You know, I'm way too paranoid for a threat. My background, I come from Compton. Niggas that slide on you, niggas that turn on you, all this wild shit. So if y'all talking crazy in these records, I'm going to have to come at y'all. Tatiana says Kendrick for the win. That's who I got. My money's on Kendrick. I, he's my favorite out of the three. Um, So boom, way too paranoid for a threat. Hey, hey, let's get it, bro. D.O.T., the money, power, respect. The last one is better. Say it's a lot of goofies with a check. So, of course, that's a shot at Drake. Everybody knows people in the industry, people around the industry, people just watching and spectating at the industry. They feel like Drake is a goofy with money. You know what I'm saying? From day one, he was like cosplaying a rapper. This is the same guy who was wheelchair Jimmy. This is the same guy who had a Jew fro in high school, got with a few new friends, and they gave him a complete makeover, which he's been living out ever since. That's no shots at Drake. This is documented in your story, right? So, boom, goofy with a check. That's how they that's how they talk about him. <laughs> Parker says, I just know Drake's not winning anything. God dang. He going to win with the record sales, though. Tiali says, oh, oh T-A, T-I says, hip hop just got interesting. If I can't say your name, I'm sorry. We got some folks in the chat. I got Dot. Let's go, K Dot. Yeah, so everybody knows Drake has been perceived as corny this whole time. Let's get back to the lyrics. Um, he says, I mean, uh, them, I hope them sentiments symbolic. Uh, my temperature bipolar, I choose violence. Okay, let's get it up. It's time for him to prove that he's a problem. Niggas clicking up, but cannot be legit. No 40 water. Tell him. So he says, hey, y'all clicking up, but cannot be legit. No 40 water. So for those of y'all that don't know about the click, that's 40 water, a.k.a. E-40 and be legit they were a group back in the late 80s early 90s and he says oh y'all clicking up but y'all not legit like 40 water what the fuck going on you know what i'm saying because i thought cole was was my guy i thought cole was my homie but i see you with the ops now and y'all linking up talking crazy we're gonna get into those first person shooter lyrics next so he like i bet we finna get to it's tay okay thank you for the correction tay i'm sorry um i saw the uh, apostrophe and got a little lost uh, Pink Tea Time says, I want to see Drake prove himself against a worthy opponent like Kendrick. Meek Mill was an easy opponent because he's a little slow, but I want to see if Drake can rise to the occasion. I think Meek Mill was an actual formidable formidable opponent. It's just that the the crowd and the, uh, the fucking audience at the time, they weren't willing to see him go against Drake. Drake was so much, he, was, he had all the favor. So anything that Meek Mill would have dropped, they would have said was whack. But I understand Meek Mill is not on the level of a Cole or a Kendrick. So it's going to get interesting. Make sure y'all hit, hitting that poll and let me know who y'all got in that in this whole thing. Um, who else we got in here? We got Max saying K-Dot at the end of it. Some green guy says love Kendrick um, and J. Cole, F. Drake. <laughs> y'all so biased with this F. Drake, man. Drake is dope too. Let's get back to the lyrics. Oh, uh, yeah. Get up with me. F sneak dissing. First person shooter. I hope they came with three switches. So he's saying, hey, y'all sneak dissing. Y'all doing this first person shooter shit. I hope y'all got three switches. I hope y'all got all of the firepower because that's what it's going to take to take me down. Y'all could gang up. Y'all could throw shots. But I hope y'all got extendos because y'all know I could do this all day. Right. He says, I crash out like fuck rap. This Melly Mel if I had to. That's a crazy line right there. I don't think this line got enough credit. To say I crash out, say fuck rap, diss Melly Mel if I had to. Melly Mel is a hip hop pioneer, you know, from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and all that. One of the original rappers from the 80s. He said, man, I'll diss that nigga if I had to. And he's a pillar in what this even is. So y'all definitely fall in the line of fire if y'all playing like this. I'll crash out and just say fuck it all together. I'm going at everybody neck, right? So then in the next line, he says he got two T's with him. I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up. Now, a lot of people, we've heard Kendrick Lamar name two T's in a bunch of different songs. And to be honest, I never really knew who he was. But two T's is Kendrick's director of security. Um, 
And he he been with Top Dog Entertainment for a long time, and they've been friends. Kendrick insists on having a bodyguard when he makes threats, as he's seen many of his more more reckless peers die without one. That's what they're saying in the genius annotations. So he says, lost too many soldiers not to play it safe. So he says, I'm only coming out with me and, and, and two T's, right? I ain't got no other rappers backing me. I'm just going to fire off at niggas. We just going to have a going to have at it, right? Uh, lost too many soldiers not to play it safe. Um, if he walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. So he's saying, if you see me with a stick, it's not a flute like Andre 3K. I addressed that last night. But it's also a reference at the song Stick, which was on Dreamville song featuring... Uh, J. Cole and Jid, right? He like, hey, you y'all niggas want to talk about sticks. Well, if you see me with mine, it's not a flute. This ain't no Andre 3000. He said, think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Motherfuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, bomb. What? I'm really like that. Your best work is a light pack. And everybody knows Drake doesn't have no real classic albums. Most of his best work is on those, uh, those... Those light packs that he puts out, like the little EPs and playlists and stuff like that. Your best work is a light pack. Nigga, Prince out. Live Mike Jack. Nigga, bomb. For all your dogs getting buried. So he makes a reference at Drake's album for all the dogs. He said, for all your dogs getting buried. This is a K with all these nines. He going to see Pet Cemetery. So a K with all these nines. Of course, K is Kendrick, a.k.a. he's a he's an A.K., Loaded with nines. Y'all going to see Pet Cemetery. So all your dogs is finna die. Right? And he ends the verse on a high note. This is crazy. You feel like colorism played a role with Meek versus Drake? Maybe so. Maybe with the females. Maybe with the women. They might have played that game. Said Drake does a lot of sneak dissing like Nicki Minaj. Oh, you're going to get the barbs ruffled. <laughs> hey, for y'all watching, I didn't say it. That's Tay. But they do a lot of the same things. I got to be honest. Everybody, there's a lot of people in here saying K die all day. Make sure y'all keep answering that poll. Um, so let's get into first person shooter because this is the song that really got Kendrick up in arms. It was like, oh, this is really smoke. I bet I got a, I got a full clip for both of you guys, right? So again, this song was on Drake's for all the dogs. So they talking about, oh, it's bigger than the Super Bowl. So J. Cole comes in, first person shooter mode. We turn your song to a funeral to the niggas that say they want office. You better be talking about working your cubicle. So he say, if you want an office, you better be talking about an office in your cubicle, right? Yeah, them boys had it locked, but I knew the code. I picked it. Lots of niggas debating my, my numero, not the three, not the two. I'm the UNO. So Drake, I mean, J. Cole comes in at the top of first person shooter declaring he is the one. This ain't no big three. It's the one. So J. Cole already made his statement, you know, almost a year ago. Let it be known. Yeah. Numero UNO. Me and Drizzy, this shit like the Super Bowl, you know. But then he's still giving Drake credit at the same time. Then Drake comes in, but it's the difference. It's just two guys playing their shit that they did in the studio. Niggas usually send their verses back to me and they be terrible, just like a two-year-old. So Drake gets on there popping his shit. He says, I love a dinner with some fine women when they start debating about who the goat. I'm like, go ahead, say it then. Who the goat? Who the goat? Who you bitches really rooting for? So he he says he be at dinner with fine women and they start talking about the goat conversation, whether it's Drake, Kendrick, or Cole. And he says, well, go ahead. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. Tell me who you got. Be honest. Who you riding with? You sitting here eating dinner with me, but you you really <laughs> you really be listening to them other niggas. Is that what's happening? Because I need to know. You know how Drake do. Dirty macking. And he says, like a kid that act bad from January to November, nigga, it's just you and Cole. So for a kid that acts bad from January to November, of course, on Christmas, you get a, a stocking full of coal. Right? Boom. So from there, J. Cole tags back in. He says, niggas so thirsty to put me in beef, dissecting my words and starting to look too deep. I look at the tweets and start sucking my teeth. I'm letting it rock because I love the mystique. So people putting me in beef. I see y'all talking on Twitter and whatnot. I'm sucking my teeth, but I'm letting it rock because I don't like being out here in the mess. He said he still want to get a song with YB. Of course, people were talking about that because NBA Youngboy actually dissed him. He says, can't trust everything that you saw on IG. Just know if I diss you, I make sure you know that it hit you like I'm on your call ID. So he says, if I had a problem with anybody 
out here, you know that I hit you like because my name would be on your call ID. Right. He says, I'm naming the album to fall off is pretty ironic because it ain't no fall off for me. Still in this bitch getting bigger. They waiting on the kid to come like a father to be. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We we the big three like we started a league. But right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. So he says we the big three like Ice Cube's basketball league. But as of right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali, which is the greatest of all time. And he starts shadow boxing. Huh. <laughs> Like, nigga, I'm finna knock niggas out. If y'all feel like it's three of us, I feel like it's just me. Again, Cole already declared this. Yeah, Muhammad Ali, the one that they call when they shit ain't connecting no more, feel like I got a job in IT. Like, if your computer shit ain't working, your phone down, you gonna call a nigga that IT. So I'm the IT dude. I'm the one that fixes all this shit. Rhyming with me is the biggest mistake. The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. It's like we recruited your homies to be Demon Deacons. We got them attending your wake. So now he says, hey... The Spider-Man meme is me and Drake. We looking back at each other like, it's you, it's you, it's you. So, of course, Kendrick is watching this and listening to this like, oh, niggas is trying to crop me out the picture? Oh, okay. Got it. Right? Hate how the game got away from the bars, man. This shit like a prison escape. Everybody steppers were fucking then everybody breakfast and I'm about to clear up my plate. Now, of course, referring to the steppers, Kendrick Lamar's last album is called Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Right. So he said, if everybody steppers, then everybody breakfast. I'm about to clear up my plate. So I'm about to eat up all you niggas. You think that y'all out here doing something? Cool. You know what I mean? Boom. When I show up, it's motion picture blockbuster. The goat with the golden pen, the top toucher, the spot rusher. Spray his whole shit up, the crop duster. Like, you know, a crop duster, they spraying all that shit over the plants. I spray your whole shit up. Not Russia, but apply pressure to your cranium. Cole's automatic when aiming them with the boy in the status. is stadium. So J. Cole basically did this whole verse saying, if it's three, it's really two, right? Because he's keeps bigging up Drake. In the midst of him saying he's number one, he keeps Drake in the conversation for some odd reason. But of course, they're they're collaborating on this record. Plus, they already were planning on doing that tour. So it makes sense. But it does come off, come off a little weird, especially when throughout the, the course of J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar's career, they always have been tight. They collaborated on so many different tracks. Um, they used to be super tight. They even had an album that was projected to come out many years ago that never saw the light of day. So... You thought, or we thought that their connection was deeper. Kendrick's looking like, okay, I guess it wasn't as solid as I thought. Then Drake tags back in. I'm about to click out on this shit, you know? Say, I'm about to click out on you hoes and make a crime scene. I click the trigger on the stick like a high beam. So here we have this stick thing again. So that could be a double entendre saying, you know, because J. Cole has the song Stick. And then we have on this same song, um, Drake talking about the stick. I think Kendrick definitely laid this verse down probably the night after he heard First Person Shooter and we're just now hearing it because he was definitely going in, right? He says, I clicked the trigger on the stick like a high beam and I was Bentley wheel whipping when I was 19. She called my number and leave her hanging. She got dry clean. That's tough a line, but that, that, we're going to skip past that. She got an Android. Her messages is lime green. I search one name and end up seeing 20 tings. This is the bullshit part of his verse, Right. You niggas still taking pictures on the gold stream. My young is richer than you rappers and they all stream. So he's saying my niggas that stream are richer than you rappers. I really hate that you've been selling them some false dreams. Man, if your pub was up for sale, I'd buy the whole thing. That could be a shot for Kendrick, but Kendrick already sold his publishing. Um, well, he did a publishing deal. Let's not say he sold his publishing. He did a pub deal with Universal for like damn near like a hundred million or some shit. So his pub is not for sale. But he's saying, if it was, I still buy the whole thing, right? He says, will they ever give me flowers? Well, of course not. They don't want to have that talk because it's a sore spot. So he's saying, niggas, niggas don't want to have the conversation with Drake being number one because it's a sore spot. Everybody wants to bring up all these different, uh, these different facts or different um, distractions from him being number one. That's how he feels. Like, oh, y'all want to say this person rap better than me. Oh, this person's more artistic than me. But nigga, I put the numbers on the board every time. I gotta be the goat. Right. They say they know the boy, the one they got a boycott. I told Jimmy Jam I use a Grammy as a doorstop. So no respect for the Grammys. Um, and then, of course, uh, niggas talking about 
when it's gonna be repeated, like when there's gonna be the next Drake. He said, What the fuck, bro? I'm one away from Michael, nigga. Beat it. So he called himself Michael, right? And shortly after this uh verse came out, he actually took over the Michael Jackson record of having the most number one records. So Drake was popping his shit, Cole was popping his shit, and and uh <laughs> Kendrick Lamar was like my dog on belly with the banana, like mm, I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit at all. <laughs> so now Kendrick Lamar has completely riled up the game, right? We got Pink Tea Time saying, you're so ready for the responses. K-Dot really waking things up. I completely agree. I hope y'all still riding with me. I'm going through these lyrics and breaking all this stuff down. But keep keep uh, voting on the poll, right? So now we know that this is a clear cut response from Kendrick to First Person Shooter from Drake and J. Cole, but it's not as simple as that, right? The Kendrick Lamar Drake issue has been going on since 2013. It's been 11 years in the making. Um, of course, we know Drake collaborated with Kendrick on Good Kid, Mad City, the song Poetic Justice, um, but Drake also featured Kendrick on uh, Take Care on the song Buried Alive, right? So he gave Kendrick a very big Cosign gave him a great look in the earlier times of his career, a year before he fully blew up. So Drake has always looked at Kendrick as somewhat of a little bro or someone who's smaller or lesser than him because he like, nigga, I, I gave you the break that you was looking for, you know. And we're going to go back to the control verse where shit began to ignite. So when you look at the control verse from Kendrick, he took aim at pretty much everybody in hip hop in the spirit of competition and let it be known. I'm coming for the spot. Y'all want to compete with each other. I want to compete with the GOAT. So whoever is collateral damage, sorry for you. You know what I mean? So I don't like the intro to the control verse, but I like when he actually gets to his shit. So it says, tell Flex to drop a bomb on this shit. So many bombs ring, ring the alarm like Vietnam on this shit. So many bombs make Farrakhan think some dumb in this bitch. One at a time, I line them up and bomb on their mind while they watching the kids. He says, I'm in destruction mode if the gold exists. I'm important like the Pope. I'm a Muslim on pork. Of course, we know Muslim eating pork is like sacrilegious. So he says, I don't give a fuck what none of y'all talking about. All this, all this sacred shit. Nah, gloves off. I'm Machiavelli's offspring. I'm the king of New York, king of the coast. One hand, I juggle them both. So he says, nigga, I'm the king of New York too, and I'm Machiavelli offspring on the West Coast. Nigga, I, ain't, no, ain't nobody exempt. The juggernaut's all in your juggler. You take me for jokes. Live, live in the basement, church pews and funeral faces. Cartier bracelets for my women friends. I'm in Vegas. Who the fuck y'all thought it's supposed to be? If Phil Jackson came back, still ain't no coach of me. Ain't nobody over me, nigga. If Phil Jackson came back... <laughs> Stay where you at, my nigga. I got this. I'm uncoachable. I'm unsociable. Fuck y'all clubs. So he let it be known 10 years ago, all that buddy-buddy shit was not for him. Fuck y'all pictures. Your Instagram can gobble these nuts. Gobble dick up to your hiccup, my big homie Corrupt, which he sampled. Well, not sampled, but used the interpolation of a lyric from Corrupt. This the same flow to put the rap game on a crutch. I seen niggas transform like villain Decepticons. Molly's probably turning these niggas to fucking Lindsay Lohan. A bunch of rich ass white girls looking for parties, playing with Barbies. Wreck the Porsche before you give them the car key. So it's like y'all niggas is y'all niggas act like rich white girls. Like y'all out here partying, being all shoulder rubbing shoulders with these niggas, man. Fuck all that, dog. This is about supremacy, nigga. I got in this shit. It's crazy. Who's the clone? Who's a clone? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cajun Dajun. Who you who you calling a clone? I, I, I need to know. Who's the clone? Ryan says 2024 about to be a great year for hip hop. Kendrick Cole and Drake are all dope rappers. Rap fans are winning. Yeah. So going back to the lyrics, because this is the verse that ruffled everybody's feathers. We wouldn't even have this new diss if this never happened. Right? Um... Wreck the Porsche before you give him the car key. Judgment to the monarchy. Blessings to Paul McCartney. You called me a black beetle. I'm either that or a Marley. So the whole black beetle thing. Jay-Z black beetle. 
Um, I don't smoke crack, motherfucker. I sell it. I'm dressed in all black. This is not for the fans of Elvis. I'm dressed in all black. So, uh, yeah, we the OGs over here, y'all. Nah. I'm aiming straight for your pelvis. You can't stomach me. You plan on stumping me. Bitch, I've been jumped before you put before you put a gun on me. So he's saying, I'm aiming straight at your pelvis, shoot you in the stomach. Right? You can't stump him. What? You can't stomach me. Bitch, I've been jumped before. You put a gun on me like nigga, you could try what you want, but I've been through it before. I know how to I know how to come out on top. Right? Bitch, I put one of yours on Sean Connery, James Bonding with none of you niggas climbing a hundred mil in front of me. And I'm going to get it even if you're in the way. And if you're in it, better run for Pete's sakes. And you're going to get the 100 mil regardless. And he's not James Bonding with none of you niggas. None of that golden PP7 Sean Connery bullshit. Right? He said, I heard the barbershops being great debates all the time about who's the best MC, Kendrick, Jigger, and Nas. So he put himself above all the rest. He said, if you're talking best MCs, it got to be Kendrick, Jigger, and Nas. Nobody else in my class. It got to be the legends. Right. Eminem, Andre 3000, the rest of y'all new niggas, just new niggas don't get involved. Everybody heard this, but we're going over the history. Right. And I ain't rocking no more designer shit. White tees and Nike Cortez, this red Corvette's anonymous. I'm usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. So he says, I'm usually homeboys with you guys, but this is hip hop. You should know what time it is because I'm finna go at all y'all. And he says, and that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mill, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. So he's let, he let it be known a long time ago. I got love for y'all. Please don't take offense. But I want to be the one. Right? Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. Every time you see me, I want your fans to forget about you. They don't want to hear not one more now a verb from you niggas. What is competition? I'm trying to raise the bar high. Who trying to jump and get it? You better off trying to skydive. So he's saying, I'm going to set the bar so high. You trying to jump and get it. You better off skydiving to get that shit. You can't jump up. You might as well fall from the top and try to get it. Right? Out the exit window of the uh, five G's with five grand with your granddad as the pilot. I don't even, I hate this part of the, uh, of the verse. Because this shit didn't make no type of sense. This, he, he fucked himself up with this. Talking about some out the window exit of five G's with five grand with your granddad as the pilot. I ain't like that shit. Like, what the hell you talking about? But the gist of it was he went at these niggas, right? <laughs> uh, so Cajun Dajan says, meant to say Drake is a clown. Drake can't outwrap none of them. But out politic all of them. He's a gatekeeper. Okay, so you say Drake was the clone. Okay, I got it. Cool, 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 cool. Damn. I wouldn't call him a clone. But hey, we're all sharing our opinions here. I actually like Drake. But Kendrick is definitely my favorite of the three. With Cole at number two, in my opinion. Drake would be the third. Um, Bone. Cajun Dajan says he did the politic ish with Pusha T, then dropped that weak ass song, but everybody ate it up. Back to back was tough though. Charged up was weak. Like that charge was not charged at all. Like that was a dead ass laptop. I ain't gonna lie to you. But back to back was tough. Plus it was commercially successful. It played in all the clubs. So that nigga had to ride around and hear his ass getting flamed up for the next two years. I think that's very strategic. I know you say that's uh, political, but. That's kind of how the game goes. If you go back to Tupac, Tupac kind of did the same thing. Tupac would go at your neck. He would say shit directly at you. But then one of my favorite Tupac songs is called Toss It Up, which is a song that was dedicated to women. The nigga had four verses on the song. Song is like eight, six minutes or some shit. The fourth verse, he starts taking shots at Dr. Drake, right? Um. So... Toss It Up was a single that played on the radio. Um, so there's certain artists in their game that know how to play that game. Like I dish your ass direct and I dish your ass on one of my big songs. Jay-Z is another one who likes to do that. Play the political game. I go at your throat directly. I do you, I'll do. i throw subliminals on my album, but I'm also going to throw shots at you. And... No, I'm not talking about Duppy. Duppy was a totally different thing. That's a push a T situation. Um, but 
the whole thing with Duppy, Duppy was like, Duppy was dope, but it didn't, it didn't register. You know what I mean? I don't even really acknowledge that Drake went at Pusha T to be honest, because it didn't really, it didn't really hit the mark. It didn't hit the target. Like he acted like he was so tired. He wanted, he nigga was yawning in the studio and shit before he put the verse down. Like, like, bro, don't act like you resistant. Like you, ah, uh, uh, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta respond. So I don't even really acknowledge that joint. When I think about Charged Up going at, um, cause Charged Up was also a shot at Pusha T and Meek Mill. Um, cause Pusha T had been baiting him for like four, four years before he even acknowledged the nigga. So honestly, what I think sparked this is a bit J. Cole's new snippet. Uh, honestly, Christian, I don't believe that the, the snippet from J. Cole's The Fall Off Might Delete Later. I think that Kendrick's verse has been done for quite some time. I think as soon as he heard First Person Shooter, it was over with. Because by then, he linked up with Future, linked up with Metro. It's been waiting. If he would have had some some more up to date references in his verse, I could probably see what you were saying. Like if he wanted to really go at Cole tough, he could have went at Cole a, a lot harder. But he aimed most of his shots at Drake, and then there was some where he kind of pulled that. Uh, I'm gonna send one shot and hit two niggas. You know what I'm saying? One go through your shoulder, and the other one go through the nigga head. You know what I mean? Type shit. But. That's your perspective, though. I respect it. Pusha T made Drake be a father. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're trying to hide the world from your kid or your kid from the world, my G. <laughs> J. Cole need to stand up and say who he is dissing. J. Cole. J. Cole kind of made it clear on first person shooter who he was going at, because if you're standing right next to Drake sending shots out, who else is there for him to send shots out at? Right. He did expose his kid. He wouldn't have told anyone else. Yeah, he was definitely hiding it. You know, he had a, he had a baby with a porn star and uh, he was definitely not trying to put that out there. And, and, and Pusha T said, not so fast, nigga. We got the fouls. <laughs> now, now Nikki need to make a song with Kendrick. That's never gonna happen. If if Nikki did a song with with Kendrick, Young Money is over forever. <laughs> she wouldn't do that. A lot of goofies with a check is a double. He was talking about goofies with a check and goofies with a check. Yes, I'm I'm aware that uh, Drake has a Nike deal, or at least he did have a Nike deal. Goofy with a check, but you know. Either way it goes, you goofy with a check, bro. You lame. We all know you lame. You you came out with a Jew fro. Now you wanna now you wanna get Nipsey cornrows. Nah, fam, we not taking that shit, right? From Jake, from uh, Kendrick's perspective, none of this is my personal opinion except the folklore and the lore around the lyrics. I ain't got no problem with nobody, but if I'm choosing anyone in this, I'm rolling with K Dot. What you feel sorry for Future for? Future taking shots all over the album too. Like Future definitely drew a line in the sand. They say he was dissing Drake on the intro. They've been fell out. So don't feel sorry for him. Future is the king of the underworld. He's not big three, but he's the king of the underworld. When niggas want to want to get credibility, what did Drake go do? What a time to be alive. Next thing you know, he started hanging out with all the niggas from East Atlanta. That's how he recruited Quentin Miller to start ghostwriting for him. Like a lot of this Drake shit be hitting funny in the light, you know, and I like Drake, but the chinks in his armor do kind of run deep. If we just talk in hip hop. Next thing you know, he can't he can't really link with future the same way. He's going to go to the next nigga from East Atlanta, 21 Savage. It looks a little funny when you put the microscope over it. J. Cole basically been standing alone his whole career, except for the people he signs to Dreamville. Kendrick, Ben said his piece back in 2013. He said, I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. He's been standing on his own from jump, right? Next thing you know, Drake comes out 
on nothing was the same. And he says, you know, I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. Like he said that to uh, Kendrick. Like they hyping you up. They acting like you're this lyrical genius. But to me, your shit is not all that inspiring, bro. Like you just decent. We like what you talking about, but don't get too big for your britches. Don't forget who got you here in his estimation because he still feels like you wouldn't even be this popular had I never featured you on my song. But what I want to do is go ahead and pull up Kendrick's um, verse from the BET, right? Because Kendrick been letting shit fly, right? This nigga was going in. Normally, I don't play music and stuff because of the copyright issue, but we could play this because we can't. All right. Bet. I hate y'all. I do anything to replace y'all. Shout out to Face Mom. Or get a boy till I'm unemployed with a day job. And kick hey, bro, this nigga first line in the verse said, I hate y'all. I do anything to replace y'all. Let's just let's just run that back. Cause he let like this nigga been playing on y'all head top for a fucking decade, and y'all niggas just now <laughs> really trying to get the courage to play with this nigga. I hate y'all. I do anything to replace y'all. Shout out to Face Mom. I get a boy till I'm unemployed with a day job and kicking boxes. I kick ass and then kick knowledge. I'm way more polished than 99% of the scholars you thought had graduated. I'm the master that masturbated on your favorite MC until the industry had wanted me assassinated. You either corny or an opportunist. I let you eat now. Go back to church and still like, practice. I don't think we gave this verse enough, like, real credit. This nigga was going crazy. Listen to what this nigga saying. Ten years ago. A boy till I'm unemployed with a day job and kicking boxes. I kick ass and then kick knowledge. I'm way more polished than 99% of the scholars you thought had graduated. I'm the master that masturbated on your favorite MC until the industry had wanted me assassinated. You either corny or an opportunist. Either corny or an opportunist. Who y'all think? Come on. Who was that aimed at? You either corny or an opportunist? Come on. Everybody know Drake is kind of corny, but then the opportunist line is where Drake links up with certain people, consumes their life force and their energy, assimilates their flow, and then gets rid of them. Good God. I let you eat now, go back to church and steal for grabbing it. Turning to arrest the actresses, what a magistrate accidents never happen when murder's involved. Immaculate tactics will follow me. If you need me, just call on me. I say, hold up, wait a minute. Your career ain't sh unless you got some Kendrick in it. You saying ain't no room is left on my unless you look like George Fox, make my mark on that what? Hollywood's been good to me. Little hood used to pawn mom's jewelry. Family Jews, big as and I got the boss to say it. Boss deep, ballin' out till Sparta need a replacement. I'm out chill. The west of your mouth chill. Invest in the vest of Vietnam vet when you out near. The white court building spilling this Merlot, filling women of fur coat, pimp the industry. Mimic these Stacey Adams and fur coats shook. You're scared to death, you're scared to look in the mirror when Kendrick is near you. King Kendrick. So this was the first Candyman reference. He said, you scared to look in the mirror when Kendrick is near you. Say you shook. So this, this was the first Candyman reference that we got from Kendrick saying, hey, say my name, nigga. <laughs> say my mother effing name. Come play with the big dog. Man, shit got real. Right? So then from there. They've been throwing shots back and forth for years between Kendrick and Drake, right? Drake comes back. He gets on the shit remix with Future, and he says, yeah, I just think it's funny how they dangle in the bait, but I'm the one that's killing niggas on the hooks. You know what I'm saying? And he said some shit like, uh, you the hot shit, but if I acknowledge you, you still the hot shit. Basically saying people acting like you the hot shit, but to me, your music is hot shit, like hot garbage. Very weak diss, very, very mild sauce of Drake, but he still was trying to put up a fight. Y'all keep saying Drake an energy vampire. <laughs> Maybe if Drake knew who he was, everyone wouldn't be able to get a lick off. Jesus Christ. Y'all, y'all, y'all got a lot of shots for the boy, man. That's crazy. But some of it is justified. I can't even lie. So. 
Then he comes out and says, uh, mind you, I never once said Kendrick's a bad guy or that, that I don't like him. I think he's an effing genius in his own right, but I also stood my ground as I should. And with that came another step, which then I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not going to fall. So he says, I feel like you're baiting me to a to a fight that, no, I'm not going to let you bait me. If I got an issue with you, I'm going to get to you on my own time. But it also showed that Drake was a little bit shook, right? So then Kendrick makes an appearance on a J-Rock song called Pay For It, where he says, I tell him all the hell, King Kendrick resurrected my vengeance been dissecting your motor mouth you talking crazy till i break down the engine right now the motor mouth situation let's get to what drake had to say about the control verse because he had some words for kendrick in an interview he tried his hardest not to acknowledge him for a while but elliot wilson brought it to his desk so let's get into that conversation where drake had to had to do some 3D magic, 3D uh, <laughs> chess to get out the way. Kendrick. Nobody yelled out Kendrick. You just heard that in your head. <laughs> no, earlier. When you go to sleep, you just hear somebody be like, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> no, but here's what's funny about you and Kendrick Lamar. It's like people forget you had him on Take Care. You had him on Buried Alive. You talked about a meeting that you guys had where you kind of were schooling him on the game. And there's a great line about how he realized he's the same age as you, and he, it made him rude and impatient. So it's almost like it's very foreshadowing. You know, he ended up making a great record, Good Kid, Mad City. Just the connection. A phenomenal you, album, a by phenomenal the way. Album. Phenomenal album. Yeah, round of applause. And then now he takes a competitive stance with a verse like Control. And then you was, you said that you know he's not murdering you in any platform. But you know that's that's where that rivalry. That's where people want to try to build. <laughs> that's if you want to try to build the rivalry. Like, what's your, what's your take on that? Do you feel like that they're trying to, they're trying to create a competition that, that he's not on your level because of your accomplishments? Like, do you feel like they're trying to hype this up and elevate it too much? Nah, I, I feel like that, that's, that's it. It's like, you know, he's, an, he's the new guy to love. And of course, I mean, rightfully so. He's super talented, you know. But, thank you. But he's, he's, <laughs> but he's like, you know, he is the underdog that's extremely hungry, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and he's doing his thing really well. Um, and that verse was, he's giving people like moments, you know, like that, that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, are you listening to it now at this point in time? Uh, okay. And then, <laughs> but it was, it was real. The crowd was really on his nuts that day too. Real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. But like, if I asked you, for example, like, how does that verse start? Uh, <laughs> no, if you remember, <laughs> he did say that. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one that you heard about. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now you talking about language? Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. No, and like, no, no, no. I, no, now mind you. It'll go on and complex and rap radar, give it like verse of the millennium and all that shit or whatever. <laughs> but like, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, um, I remember like um, somebody like asking me, you know, or maybe it was you that was like, is Kendrick Lamar your biggest competition like in this generation or whatever? Yeah. And I think that Kendrick has like the utmost potential, man. Like, you know, I see Kendrick tomorrow, I'm a dap him. I didn't feel a way about that verse. I get it. I get the moment. Like, you know, he's a good guy. And, and, and like, I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. So it's like, he didn't come on there on some wild, like, yeah, I'm in New York, fuck everybody, don't look at me. Like, <laughs> like I'm the king. So it, it was, you know, it was. That's not an accent. That's, that's his natural speaking voice. Everything else that he'd be doing is the accent. It was one of those things, it's like, I almost wish he had come in there on that shit because I kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Drake is out here forgetting his lyrics on tour? Where do we see that at? Where did that happen? I know some other artists, some very notable artists been forgetting their lyrics on tour. But when did that happen with Drake? I didn't, I never seen that. Drake, every time I've seen Drake perform, he's been on point. Well, that's just how I feel. Yeah. But, but anyway, like, you know, um, I, I still like, 
when it comes to competition, I'm just I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. I'm talking about hit records. I'm talking about to, I'm to, I'm basically talking about like you know there's one guy who's up every night thinking about how to get better and how to do things bigger. And you know that's Kanye West. He's like the, you know he's like he's always he's always gonna be. So I'm guessing this is where the Kanye smoke really started to uh, brew up behind the scenes. He just named him like, if I'm going at anybody, it got to be Kanye West. We see how that played out. He's always going to be the guy that's trying to outthink and outdo, you know, everybody. So for me, that that would be like, you know, that's my that's my guy that I aspire to surpass you know what i mean and, and 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 as far as kendrick goes like i can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove and and consistency is it's been one album consistency is like you need more than one album you know what i'm saying so it's like it's time to show and prove and i look forward to seeing what he does man he's fucking super talented so yeah cheers to kendrick lamar all right so that nigga basically played tennis that whole interview backhanded compliments just playing tennis <laughs> He's super talented, but you only got one album. Let's see if you last. The verse was dope, but who's still listening to it? Like, just backhanded compliments the whole way, right? You say, no, nah, that's not his authentic speaking voice. He is suppressing. Drake does not have no Canadian accent. What are you talking about? <laughs> that man is a Jewish, mixed, partially black man. Like... He code switches for sure. That's the way he's talked from day one. Like, I understand y'all don't like Drake. I understand a lot of y'all criticize him. But some of the allegations ain't true. I'm just going to be honest. Like, we're not going to just treat him like a punching bag in here because of recency bias. <laughs> but I respect y'all's opinions. Someone says no one gives a F about a hit record and radio play. I hate music now. It doesn't feel authentic. Really? No one cares about radio play? Because I feel like that conversation always comes up. That like anybody that's not getting more radio play or that's not getting the hit records, people discount them and act like they're not valid. So I think that's a I think that's an interesting dichotomy, honestly, is like depending on who it is that we like. We kind of shift the narrative a little bit. And that's even on myself. We all kind of shift the narrative depending on who the subject of the conversation is. When it comes down to uh, to Kendrick's last album, um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, a lot of people tried to act like it wasn't a good album because it wasn't a commercially friendly album. It was a very cathartic album. He, he took time out to basically write out his therapy sessions and talk about things that were going on in his life and talk about just real life shit. But it wasn't necessarily poppy. It wasn't commercial to the same effect of a Drake. And a lot of people said, I cut this album on and went to sleep. But then when it comes to other people, such as a Drake, we say, ah, we don't care about the hit records. But then when Drake drops an album that doesn't have so many poppy hit records, People say, damn, is he falling off? So I think it gets very interesting in that aspect. But I understand where y'all are coming from. Drake didn't actually put Kendrick on. This is a misnomer as well, but this is how Drake feels. He feels like he put Kendrick on, but Kendrick was already on his way to becoming exactly who he was when he got on the Take Care album. Yes, there was a fan base of Drake fans that heard him. And was like, this nigga going in. But let's be honest. A lot of the women, a lot of the people that listened to that Take Care album were women fans that were listen to, listening to Drake for Marvin's Room and shit like that. Not to say all women were listening to him for that, but his fan base at that time, that's what they were into. They wanted to hear him sing, croon, and sometimes rap. So when Kendrick gets on here with all these, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people was like, what the fuck is he doing? Then he turned around and did the same shit on that game song in the city where he just bombing out for like four minutes. And people, some people was like, this is crazy. This is hard. Some people is like, why is this nigga babbling for five minutes? So I think it, it all gets a little bit muddy. Drake's never been authentic, if we're being honest. 
That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, exactly, he's throwing shade like us women do. That's what Tatiana says. They feel she she feels like Drake is extremely shady, like a woman. No male says, I don't know. These one album folks been running circles around them. We got Kuro saying, Imagine if Ye made a beat for K Dot if Drake and J. Cole responded. That's possible, but you know, Kanye don't even really make beats no more. Pink Tea Time, I like Drake's music. I do too. Code switching, dope artist, top 10 lyricist. He's definitely a code switcher. But the sculpted abs, my God. Not the sculpted abs. Holy moly. <laughs> Oh, they say he got a BBL like a bad chick. Oh my God. Where did tell tell us where you've heard Drake's Canadian accent? You're saying this as if you know him personally. Where did you hear his Canadian accent? Because I hear him talk the way he spoke in that interview. I've heard him try to talk like he's Jamaican. Try to talk like he's Cardinal Official or some shit. I've heard him try to talk like he's goddamn Middle Eastern. Where is his Canadian accent? So I just need a little bit more clarity on that part personally. So moving forward, we had that that uh, that disc come out. <clears throat> From there, we had Drake come out and say, they're going to say your name on them airwaves. They're going to hit you up right after like it's only rap. This is on a song called Used To. So he says, they're going to mention your name on the airwaves. This is a direct shot at Control. Like, you're going to say niggas' names on the song. But then they're going to hit you in a text like, hey, bro, it's just rap. Don't take it too serious. Right? So this is, again, Drake being a little passive aggressive. But still, this is 2015 by the time he put this out. So for two years, it's been stewing on his mind. And he decided to say something else. Right? Then on 6 p.m. in New York, Drake comes back again and says, I got a backyard where money seems to come from the trees. As y'all know, Kendrick Lamar has a song called Money Trees on Good Kid Mad City featuring J-Rock. So he's like, OK, I'm, 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 a, I'm not over this nigga yet. I got a backyard where money seems to come from the trees and I'm never, ever scared to get some blood on my leaves. Phantom sliding like the shit just to hit a puddle of grease. I cooked the beef well done on the double with cheese. Special order for anybody that's coming for me. So he, you know, this also the song where he got at the little, little homie Tiger and, and co completely disregarded him at the same time. So he said, I cooked that beef well done on a double with C. Drake is still spitting. It ain't hitting to the same degree. Not the BBL scars. Kendrick not ready for this J. Cole on album mode. So you really feel like J. Cole finna body... Kendrick Lamar on this album. You feel like uh, J. Cole's in the studio right now making mo modifications to the fall off as we speak. Is that is that what y'all believe? Kendrick was throwing pass. How was Kendrick throwing passive aggressives when he already had lit the fire? That's what I'm not. That's what I'm not understanding. He already have said what he said. He had already put it in the atmosphere that I love all you niggas, but I'm trying to murder you. Right. And then he stayed consistently on that energy. So I don't know where Kendrick was being passive aggressive, but I'm I'm sure that this is coming from a Drake fan, which I can understand and appreciate at the same time. Right. So then Kendrick comes out on King Kunta the same year. And says, I can dig rapping. But a rapper with a ghostwriter. What the fuck happened? I swore I wouldn't tell. But most of y'all sharing bars like you got a bottom bunk in a two-man cell. Good God. So, yeah. You already know what that is. And he said this before Drake was even exposed for having a ghostwriter. So this was like just letting it be known. Somebody out there getting their shit written for him. J. Cole and Drake need to respond separately. I do believe that they should respond separately. If they tag team and do a collab and respond to Kendrick, 
it's over with. Cause it's like y'all can't stand on your own too. You take two. It take both of y'all to tag in and go at this dude. Y'all already tag teamed them on one song. Y'all gonna keep that thing going. But I also think, unfortunately, I've I, cause I I made the uh, prediction the other day when Mike Delete later two hit. I said I feel like Drake is gonna have a feature on the fall off. They've been spending way too much time together in the studio, on tour, moving around. Cole is letting Drake hear the music and all this stuff. I think there's a definitely a collab on that album. I personally feel like even if the the uh, collab has already been recorded, it's already done, people are going to listen and go through those lyrics with a fine tooth comb if they have one. And they're going to dissect and find disses, even if it's not you know, necessarily aimed at Kendrick. They're going to act like it is. So they're in a deficit either way it goes because the energy... It's already ignited. Kendrick murdered Drake's whole album in one verse. Kendrick murdered Future's whole album in one verse. And it, people are saying it's a dope album, but it's just being, um, wait, why did Kendrick tag Cole too? We went over that in the beginning. Um, but basically, just look back at First Person Shooter and listen, and actually look at the lyrics. Don't just listen to the song. Pull up the lyrics on Genius and you'll see why Kendrick is offended. Say, them niggas been dissing each other subliminally for look like eight years. What you talking about? And I, Yes, we're going over all the disses right now. Do you not hear me going through the chronological timeline? I've been doing that since for the last hour. I think you just jumped in, but we've been on that wave this whole time. I'm going through the history of the beef. So, again, it sounds like you're um, an angry Drake fan, which, again, I understand. And it's okay. I know y'all be feeling like Drake be getting jumped on. You feel like he be getting body slammed off the top rope. And sometimes that is what's happening. <laughs> but to say that um, Kendrick Lamar has been passive aggressive, that is an outright lie. Okay? 4D5, it's nothing but love and respect. But that, we just took a polygraph test. That was determined. It was a lie. OK, do I need to pull up Funk Flex? <laughs> I got no problem pulling up Funk Flex. He lied. <laughs> Don't make me do it. <laughs> would have never did that. Biggie would have never talked about this situation and I'm going to tell you what I fucking hate about, I'm going to tell you what I hate. And you want to, uh, people always want to ask me why I said it 20 years later. Laid, laid them both down. People always say why I said it 20 years later. I said it when the fucking shit was going on. And Biggie wouldn't have fucking died if that nigga hadn't have lied. He lied. Y'all niggas worship him. You sound like a Drake fan. Lied. Never, ever said nothing about him. He fucking lied. This is dedicated to you, forty-five. No, I wasn't. Much love, no, respect I wasn't to you. Tell the truth. She said, "Absolutely not." Biggie was hurt when Pac got at. He him. lied. But I but I'm but I'm gonna show you some grace because you jumped in a little later. But we went we've been going through the, the history of the disses the whole time. Right? <clears throat> so Drake gets on the game song 100, and he says, I will have all your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. So here we are with Drake basically saying, Again, y'all keep hyping this nigga up like he's a lyrical genius. Y'all keep hyping him up like he's the top dog. But I could do all the same shit that you do. I just chose to go a different route. I decided to make pop music because it was something I'm good at and I have a different objective. Drake has wanted to be the number one artist, period. He wanted to be Kanye West. It's been written in stone. He wants to be Jay-Z. It's been written in stone. So he like, bro, I'm on a different mission. I'm not trying to make conscious music. But if I wanted to go that route, I would have all your fans, right? This is all 2015. 
right? So then Kendrick Lamar, 2015, on Dark Side Gone, which is on uh, Dr. Dre's Compton album, he says, still I got enemies giving me energy. I don't want to fight now. Subliminally sending me all this hate. I thought I was holding the mic down. So he says, oh, y'all niggas still throwing energy at me. Drake song Energy. Then on the same album, he says he addresses the beef some more. He says they liable to bury him. They nominated six to carry him. Nominated six. Drake always talking about the six, right? They worry him to death, but he no vegetarian. The beef is on his breath. Inheriting the drama better than a great white nigga. This is life of my aquarium. So great white shark, you jumping in my aquarium. I'm going to eat your ass up. You, you better quit playing with me type shit, right? Next thing you know. Drake gets Obama involved, right? And he says, tell Obama that my verses are just like the whips that he in. They bulletproof. So um, in January of 2016, Obama was asked to predict whether or whether Drake or Kendrick Lamar would win in a lyrical battle. Um, and Obama sided with Kendrick. Obama said, and it's crazy to think somebody would even ask the president of the United States who going to win between a, a, a battle from Kendrick Lamar and Drake. But he said, nigga, I got Kendrick. I got K-Dot. So Drake says, nigga, tell Obama my verse is just like his whips. They bulletproof. That shit you talking, that shit y'all talking about, man. I ain't fucking with it. Right? So then we get Drake. I mean, excuse me, we get Kendrick Lamar on Untitled, Unmastered. He says, just know the mechanics of making your choice and writing your bars. Before you poke out your chest, nigga, loosen your bra. Right? So now we, uh, loosen your bra. Damn it, man. Here we go with the anatomy. <laughs> Y'all already said this nigga got a BBL and scoped the abs. Good God. <laughs> that is crazy. Then, of course, on the hard part four, Kendrick comes and says he's the greatest rapper alive. One, two, three, four, five. I got to be the one on this same hard part four. Kendrick Lamar put a fucking he treated Big Sean like a rag doll. You know, Big Sean been wanting to get in the big in the big three for a long time. Unfortunately, the cards are just not dealt for him to be in the big three. Big Sean has been getting sun since the control verse came out. Big Sean has a dope record out at the same time of this new future Kendrick Lamar collaboration. And people are just not talking about it because he's not in the big three. Big Sean just put a freestyle out the other day talking about his consistency is why he's not with the big three. So Big Sean is definitely uh you know, he's kind of standing outside the cool kids club, unfortunately. And I like Big Sean. The new record is fire. Precision is it's my favorite song of the day. But unfortunately, he's just not in the same conversation. So there we have that. We're not even going to get into more of the, the heart part four because, again, that was mostly at Big Sean. From there, they just continue to take shots, right? And a lot of people felt like it was over for a bit. They had they kind of died down. But then we got Baby Keem, Family Ties, with Kendrick Lamar. Basically letting it be known, I ain't over this shit. So he comes out, of course, we know, smoking on your top fives at night. Comes in, I'm the Omega. PG Lane Roller Gang, SIE, don't you address me unless it's with four letters, GOAT. I thought you know him better. I've been ducking the pandemic. I've been ducking the social gimmicks. I've been ducking the overnight activist year. I'm not a trending topic. Right? So... I don't want to be known as a trending topic. I don't want to be on none of this social media shit, nigga. I, I, if I got smoke with you niggas, I'm coming right at you. Right? I'm not a trending topic. I'm a prophet. I answer the Metatron and Gabriel, bitch. 
Looking for a better me. I'm a legacy. I come from the 70, the Al Green, Offspring, Guns, and the Melody, Big Shot, wrist on Cryotherapy. Soon as I press that button, nigga better get right like the ambulance coming. Us two ain't alike. He ain't been through nothing. Day free, got at least one B in the oven. I'm tripping, I'm jugging. My mental is amazing, brother. Pop off only on occasions, brother. Rich nigga mama know I made it, brother. Go figure, never call cases, brother. Face it, brother. Gracious, brother. New flows coming. Be patient, brother. Show my ass and take y'all to class. I can multitask like Megan, brother. So he said, nigga, I'm going to show my ass on y'all, pause. I'm going to go crazy. And I'm going to take y'all to class because y'all know Megan went back to school and graduated and shit. So I can multitask like Megan, which now hits even harder because Megan dissed motherfucking Drake on uh, his. Whoa. He said he was a prophet. So 2021, I ain't taking no prisoner. Last year, y'all fucked up all the listeners. Who went platinum? I call that a visitor. Who the fuck backing them? All been falsified. The facts mean it's a vaccine and the game need me to survive. The Elohim, the rebirth. Before you get to the father, you got to holler at me first. So before you get to God, you think you're the sixth God. Before you get to God, you got to holler at me first, nigga. Smoking on top five. Motherfuck your album, fuck your single, burn your hard drive. God, ain't nobody safe when I come. I'm killing everybody that's outside. Yeah, Kanye changed his life, but me, I'm still an old school Gemini. So he let it be known. I'm not letting up on none of you niggas. Kept that shit very solid. Yeah, Meg did this four or five people on one song. She wasn't playing with niggas. We did. We had a whole good ass time talking about that when that dropped. But Drake definitely was one of the people that got sliced. She said the nigga was getting surgery like the like the like the females and ha hanging in other niggas neighborhoods like a bad chick. Like she wasn't playing with that nigga neither. So I don't know, man. Twenty twenty four. It seems like people is fed up with Drake shit. <laughs> Oh man. And J. Cole seemed like he got to be the he he got to be Robocop. Like, hey man, let me help you take some of this, take some of this weight off your shoulder. Let me let me shoot some of this shit for you, man. You've been having a hard time. Nigga done dunked on you about four or five times already. Let me let me throw some shots out there and, and go back to my family real quick. Ain't that about a bitch. You say what battle? I'm talking about. The big three battle. Who do you got? Out of the big three, who do you think takes the cake? Is it Kendrick? Is it Cole? Is it Drake? That battle. Who's the big one out of the three? 45 says, I blame Jay-Z for this 10 years of subliminal dissing. Jay made that shit cool. But how are you saying it's subliminal when you like Jay-Z did it differently. When Jay was dissing niggas, we didn't even know who he was talking about. Like, he was dissing Nas for like five years. Nobody even knew. Nobody even had an inkling he was dissing Nas, right? He was dissing a lot of niggas. But when you say Kendrick is subliminally dissing people, every time he drops a verse, we already know who he's talking about before he can say it. So how is it subliminal? The nigga drop, name drop their song in the verse. How is it subliminal? First person shooter. Who else could he be talking about? And this is why I feel like you're an angry Drake fan. The things you're saying in the comment section is not making your case any better. I respect you, though. Not BBL Poppy is crazy. My God, y'all going in on this BBL shit. Wow. <laughs> Jennifer says Drake has made it as far as he has by being a hybrid. That's a fact. He's been able to he's been able to weave in and out of a lot of different things, but that's also why they feel like he's a cosplayer. Drake is having a hard three months, but that's his fault. Hold on. It's just some grown men talking on Ratch others backed with music. It's okay. What's the what's what's your issue here? 
it looked like your your name is written in Arabic. I can't even acknowledge you. But um, what are you even trying to say here? Men talking on Ratch Others backed with music. What does that even mean? Pretty Melanin. Do you think Future diss Meg? I don't think so. I think he bigger, he bigged her up. Nah, he didn't diss her. If if Future wanted to diss Meg, he knows how he can diss Meg. He could easily talk about how much she had to pay him to get on that song. He should have kept his banana skin mouth shut on. Not banana skin. No, no Mel, you flagrant. <laughs> That's flagrant. Said my boy look like Burton Ernie. That's crazy. Talking behind each other's backs. How they talking behind each other's backs when niggas already know what it is? That's the point. That's the part I just don't be getting. Meg and Kendrick come from the same school of hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> we at least know who they're talking about. It's no, it's no real guessing game. Thank you. It's not subliminal when we know who's being dissed. If I dissed you for 10 years and from the first year niggas knew I was going at your fucking head, how is it subliminal? Do we have to pull up the definition of subliminal? Like, do we do we really have to? Like, I already pulled up Funk Flex. <laughs> do we have to do this? The definition of subliminal. Because it just seems that something is not clicking here. <clears throat> Inadequate to produce a sensation or a perception existing or functioning, functioning below the threshold of consciousness. So if you're functioning below the threshold of consciousness, that means nobody knows. So. I think we should definitely be a better steward of our words before we use them. Just being honest. J. Cole, of course, a veteran. Of you talking about this verse, stop. I said a decade. Bro, you need to start the video over. You need to start the video over. I told you, we've been talking about the entire chronology of this thing. Some of these verses that I even went through while you've been on the stream came from 2014, 15, 16. So what is going on with your brain? What is going on with your comprehension? You're not seeing in 4D. What is going on? Fuck the subs. Be direct. Gain more of my respect. I'm just trying to understand what y'all are what y'all are getting at right now. Because I'm th I'm sitting here thinking this stuff is like very simple, but y'all making this more complex than the magazine. Meg came out 2024 swinging and in the words of Lil John, she said, we're going to start this off right. Drake fans are having a heart attack. They having a panic attack, a heart attack. They having a <laughs> conniption. Like it's getting weird. Bro, make your point without calling niggas Drake fans. I critique Drake like a mofo. I don't know you. Like, <laughs> how could I know that you critique Drake when you came in here seemingly defending the man? I, I don't live in your group chat. What's going on? <laughs> We've been in here dissecting the disses for an hour, but you're just making it seem like I'm just pulling up new stuff. So... It seems that you'd be moving the goalpost for your fave. It's just how it seems. Which is what I said from the beginning. I said, you. it seems like you're an angry Drake fan. I don't personally know you. I don't know where your critiques live online. So you come in here in the chat and I'm seeing what you're saying. I'm just responding to you. A lot of people on YouTube don't even respond to the chat, but I'm trying to engage. Thank you, Tay. I'm glad you're giving us a full breakdown for some of us who aren't in the loop. A lot of people aren't in the loop. A lot of people never heard these songs or heard these songs and didn't know what they was talking about. So we're trying to get to the to the nitty gritty. You know, and I just feel like, unfortunately, with, with J. Cole hopping in on Drake's song and kind of taking the position of who's the best, who's the big three? Is it K. Dot Aubrey or me? 
you know, I feel like I'm Muhammad Ali, it definitely rubbed Kendrick the wrong way. Drake got disqualified as soon as he got exposed for not writing all his music. What about what about Drake writing music for other people though? Does not does that not count at all? What about Drake firing Quentin Miller and still being at the top of the game? Does that not count for nothing at all? I just want to be fair. Everybody, dump, I said it earlier, everybody dumping on Drake, but I think some of it definitely deserves to be credited in his favor. Drake got dissed in the first and second quarter. He finna get dissed for the whole game. Pink tea time. I want to see Drake get out there. Show us what you got. Bautitious. I don't know how to say your name. Bad it, bad it coos prime. Can we just appreciate the fact that K drop K dot dropped all the sub and went directly at them? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to appreciate it, but then we get the accusations of subliminal, and I'm like, it's not subliminal if people already knew. Like the the directness really just goes to show that he ain't afraid to go at Cole at the same time. We've been known the Drake Kendrick issue was a thing. We've known it for a decade, but now. He said, oh, Cole, you want to get marked out too? Damn, I hate to do it to you, but I guess I got to. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Ever since Drake started pursing his lips, I knew he'd been, wow. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Drake with the girls because the niggas don't like him. Shit. This is coming from a woman in the chat. Damn. L. Scott, thank you so much. You say you, me and Kendrick will be heat on the track. I appreciate that because you've been calling me a hater lately. And I, I appreciate all the, the compliments because I'm definitely not a hater. I'm an equal opportunist. I go at anybody if, if the shoe fits that day. But she could afford it, so I can't even accept it as a diss if he wanted to use that. I don't know if she could afford it at the time when she was going through her situation. Maybe today. Thanks. I knew I wasn't tripping. Some other people saying otherwise. Meg Body, both Drake and Nicki Minaj in one song. Oh, shit. Y'all trying to stir up a whole nother conversation. <laughs> Y'all trying to stir up a whole nother conversation. And there's some folks in here that ain't going to be happy. Words have meanings. They sure do. I, that's why I pulled it up. 4D5. Nigga, these sub dissings was flying over niggas' heads. Even Joe Budden said these niggas sneak dissing or some scary shit. Yeah, because Joe Budden said that that's the truth. Right. Um. Cool. <clears throat> Victoria says, why y'all talking about Meg? F her. Nah, this ain't, this ain't, this is not, definitely not the Meg, the F Meg comment section. <laughs> You're in the wrong place if that's how you feel. Cause they gonna go at your neck. <laughs> that's crazy. Miss CA says, LOL true, but trust him. He'll find a way to try and get involved as he and Big Sean are left out. Big Sean is definitely left out. Big Sean is like, <laughs> Big Sean he like you ever see like a car pull up and all 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 the goddamn seats get taken and it's a nigga left outside the car like hey bro how I'm a ride like hey man you call somebody call call you a ride man we going to be we going to meet you up there that's where big Sean is right now unfortunately he got to call somebody and meet niggas up there <laughs> How am I rewriting history for D5? How where where did I rewrite history? Please pinpoint it. Please. The floor is yours. I'm not even going to acknowledge too much of you cuz I can't even comprehend your name. Respectfully. But please tell me where history is being rewritten. If you call that defending, you just in my feelings. How am I in my feelings? I've been I've been lighthearted. I've been telling jokes. I've been reading lyrics. 
I've been pulling up videos. What time do I have to be in my feelings? I'm having a good time. It's it's 120 of us in here just talking about hip hop. You the one that's trying to make it seem like something is not what it is. You the one playing, trying to play 4D chess, 4D5. I'm just speaking on what happened. This is hilarious to me. Drake will body you with singing. See, this is where, this is where you, dog. This is, this is your homeboy, 45. This your peoples. Drake gonna body somebody with singing. When did he do it? When have we seen that? <laughs> oh man, what's going on? Says, I agree, Drake always going to have a cloud over him because the ghostwriting shit. And that's the thing, right? I don't even I don't even hold the ghostwriting thing over Drake, to be perfectly honest. Because if we if we lifted the veil on hip hop and just looked at how many people have gotten songs, lyrics or pieces written for them, this whole shit goes kaput. Right. It's only going to be so many people on the other side of that still standing. So I don't really look at it that way. Who started what? I'm a Drake fan, but I think Future and K-Dot going to smoke. See? <laughs> we at least want to exist in reality. I don't know if Future going to smoke Drake, though. I got to be perfectly honest. Future is nowhere near <laughs> Drake if we're going to talk bars. That's 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 kind of crazy. But I, But I respect the objectivity. Most people didn't know these was disses just because we decide to dissect the lyrics as rap fans don't make it still not subliminal. But that's the thing. Like you pointed out Jay-Z, right? Jay-Z used to sell five million records and there was probably 60 people in the world that knew who he was talking about. And they were probably either Jay's close friends, people in his circumference, people that were at the label. You know what I'm saying? People that had to get the lyrics annotated in the album packaging. But today, over the course of the past 10 years, hip hop has evolved. It's now a conversation online. As soon as the song goes out, if you hear something remotely that relates to somebody, there's hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, that automatically know what's going on. So that's not the same as when Jay-Z was doing it. That's not a subliminal. Kendrick has been very consistent about who he's talking about. So nothing was the same. Do we got to pull the BET verse back again? Because I, I played it earlier. Nothing was the same since I dropped Control. That's the, then, wasn't that the name of Drake album? It tucked the sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Everybody that was watching that broadcast knew what the hell was going on. If two fans fight over this drama, that would be silly and hilarious. I would hope not. <laughs> I appreciate it, yeah. Like, I'm just... Thank you so much, Tay. Like, you... Come on, man. Even in the midst of, of everybody in the chat joking on Drake, I've sat and said, eh, that's not true on some of this. I, I don't put that against him. Ah, y'all gotta stop. I said that. I said, hey, man, y'all ganging up on Drake. Some of that stuff ain't valid. Right? So it's not like I'm pushing some anti-Drake narrative in here. It's just that he has a lot of visible chinks to his armor. It just is what it is. Kendrick and Cole going head to head is heavy. Them niggas been riding since high power. Exactly. Drake writing songs for other artists is great and should be taken into account for sure. But if you really like that and want to be considered as the GOAT in rap, you can't have anyone writing for you. That's very noble. But again, like I said, if we peel the curtain back on all the people that got lyrics written for them in the studio, it's going to be a lot of slow singing and flower bringing. 
Joe, now I was just starting to try to agree with you on somewhere, find a middle ground. Now you want to say Joe Button is mainstream? No, the hell he ain't. Even with his podcast, he ain't mainstream. <laughs> you said Mega Snake. She been branding herself as a snake for the past six months. I get it. It's 300 comments. I get it. I get it. I get it. But again, like I said, you'll need to start the video from the top to kind of understand. Like I went through the whole thing and you jumped in and was like, bro, you talking about, I'm like, nah, fam, I already did. I already went through this stuff. Much appreciated, Miss C8. <laughs> I'm saying, man, you trying to play 4D chess in this mug, man. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, not hating, but almost all these real arts niggas. Oh no. Oh man. That's that's crazy. If that's how they live, and that's how they live. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I, I I didn't see you, I didn't see you say you mess with Kendrick more than Drake. I'm gonna be straight up with you. So but I just I I just happen to see I'm like man what's going on here like you acting like I'm behind on something when I already went through the documentation. No, the comment section is definitely for you to speak your mind, but I'm live right now, so I'm going I'm going to read the comments and I'm going to address them as I see them. So that that's a give and take. Yeah. It's funny how y'all trying to turn this into a Megan versus Nikki uh, diss thing. This ain't, <laughs> we're not even finna get into all that today. That's a whole nother thing. They got to come back and do their due diligence. We need another diss from Nikki. We need another diss from Megan before we even start trying to break that down too critically because they only got a couple clips in the chamber. I hope Cole doesn't try to keep the peace and come for Ket. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I hope Cole doesn't try to keep the peace and come for Kendrick's head top. Oh, you hope he doesn't keep the peace. You want Cole to go at Kendrick. Okay. Honestly, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think is going to happen. I think that J. Cole is probably going to have a line or two on the fall off addressing this situation. I don't think J. Cole is going to come out with a whole song going crazy for 60 bars. I don't think he's going to go at Kendrick that hard. I don't see that in his character. I don't see that in the way that he's carried himself throughout the tenure of his career. He's always just been like uber respectful. Only people we've seen him kind of address in that manner was Wale and Kanye. And even that was like written with, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sentiments. So I don't think it's going to happen that way. When it comes to Drake, we already know that Drake ain't going to diss you until he feels like it's safe outside. Drake likes Drake likes to run niggas over on an empty street. He don't like to do shit in front of everybody. Right? So he going to wait until you niggas start forgetting what happened. And then he's going to throw a shot. And it's not going to be that hard of a shot. It's just going to be enough of a shot for people that's paying attention to know what's going on. I didn't say nothing about being a Drake hater. But yeah. <laughs> Homeboy talking about all this homosexual, bisexual stuff, man. You gonna have to chill with all that, man. That ain't got nothing to do with nobody. All right. So I feel like the conversation is beginning to devolve. I feel like the conversation is beginning to get a little less productive. The chat is going crazy. So again, y'all can let me know what y'all think down below in the actual comments. 
because we're about to go ahead and end this live. It was it's been a dope session being on here for the last hour and a half, going over the chronology of the beef between Drake and uh, Kendrick Lamar. Going over the lyrics of First Person Shooter, going over the lyrics of Like That from uh, from Kendrick Lamar, just going ahead and throwing the dynamite out there to say, I'm at you niggas' heads. This is all interesting. It's all hip-hop. It's all subjective. We all have our opinions. I try to be as respectful as I could possibly be towards everybody in their opinions. Even when I'm joking with y'all and going back and forth, there's no malice. I want to be clear. It's just honest, cool debating. So 4D5, there's nothing personal against you. It's all good. Just having a good conversation. Joe Budden, not mainstream, though. No. They could post him all they want on the on the shade room. But, yeah. At the end of the day, we don't know what none of these people are going to do. We can't control their movements. We can't treat them like action figures. So it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of 2024 pans out. Um, I know I'm going to definitely be front and center at front seat ticket to see whatever happens. Going to be covering it. We're going to make more videos. We're going to go live more often, all that whole nine. But I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, talk about a potential gunner and baby dialogue before you exit. Can we expect it? Uh, honestly, I don't see gunner and, and little baby going crazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Little baby. We haven't seen him conduct any type of hip hop beef. That I'm aware of, Gunna is basically shooting to the top without needing the help of Lil Baby, without needing the help of any of the other Atlanta rappers who have basically exiled him at this point. He's kind of expanding to another side of the industry. So I don't think we're going to see Lil Baby and Gunna really go at it. Gunna is not going to go there. He said his piece on that last album. I think that's the end of it. I think he's going to throw some shots or some shade. But we're never going to get a full on Lil Baby Gunna beef. I don't even think Lil Baby wants to acknowledge him at this point. But again, I'm about to go out. I'm about to take y'all out, out with uh, Let's Get It. Much love and respect. I appreciate y'all joining. If you're not an insider, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Join, join the crew. You know what I'm saying? Can't stay outside your whole life. Take your coat off. Take your, take your shoes off. Get you a beverage. Make sure you subscribe and hit the post notification bell. Be sure to like and share the video. Yeah, I know it got a little chippy in here, but okay, 45, I, I, I see what you're saying, but nah, I don't know about all that. You know what I mean? But I understand your angle. Kai Sinai has to know who Joe Budden is. I mean, come on. But that's my time, y'all. I'm, I'm about to dip out, but I will see y'all on the next one. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Engage with more content because we going up from here. All right. Much love and respect. I'll see y'all later. Peace. King of my city in Kodasak. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the Gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me, uh -huh. all of a sudden they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I been dropping these haters like calories, uh -huh. cross my mind, I came back with some batteries, stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble, I done came too far to be humble.